The Ariane 5, a European heavy lift launch vehicle capable of sending 21 tons into orbit. That's not just a bunch of satellites, that's the equivalent of an adult male humpback whale. Before you get any ideas, we will not be launching sea life into space. I am not getting cancelled by Peter. This is not Blackfish, the next chapter. However, realistically, to get a crew to the moon and back, we need the ability to launch five adult male humpback whales, or more accurately, the average cast of a Jeremy Kyle episode. You might think, Ariane 6. That's new, and fancy, and no, just... No. However, the vehicle did give me some inspiration for making the next big thing for European spaceflight. We're going to skip a few numbers and end up with X, which is a letter, not a number. And in this video, I'll be building it. Almost made my own head spin there with that very sudden cut to the start of the build, and that's exactly where we are. And first things first, the most critical part of a build when you're trying to build a super heavy launcher. That is, of course, going to be a tank full to the brim with lead ballast. This is how I like going about making sure that my launch vehicle can actually take what is advertised. And in order to get a crew over to the moon, well, realistically, we need to be sending at least 100 tons. So that's exactly what I have done with this. I have set it to be about 100 ton in mass. I can check this using the engineer tab at the bottom, but you can also see how much wet mass a tank has. At least you can in realism overhaul. I tend not to do that because I like using the in-game system rather than using extra tools that might make my job easier for me. Anyway, the Ariane X, which is going to be the European Space Agency's next big thing. Well, I say next big thing, we are gonna be flying an Ariane 5 before we ever get to this, but you know, I thought we needed to prepare for the future. In the last episode of For All Kerbal Kind, I did build myself a rather large launch pad that will be able to send crew over to the moon, and I really do want to be making use of that if I possibly can. And that's why, well, we want to get prepared. We want to build this thing to have it ready so that we're not hit by any sort of, you know, hidden terrible costs. When I find out that I have to spend a million and a half on tooling and my eyes widen and suddenly everything is, oh no, I shouldn't have spent all that money on upgrade points. Yeah, this thing is going to cost about a million and a half to tool. It's a bit unfortunate. And it's also going to cost me about 140,000 funds just to build and fly. Now, I had a version of this where it was only 100,000 tons, I'm not entirely sure where that extra 40,000 has come from, but this is something that I will have to investigate as, you know, that is quite a lot of money to be throwing down the drain. Anyway, long chat about money aside, the first part of this build is going to be me getting the basic structure of the Ariane X, and what I wanted to go for for this was very much mimic how the Ariane 5 looks, but just make it a lot bigger. And when I say a lot bigger, we're gonna have five volcanoes on the base of this thing rather than just the one. And we're gonna have a lot more of the P241 solid rocket boosters. I believe that's the solid rocket booster that is used on the regular Ariane 5. Yeah, we're gonna have, we're gonna have six of those. And to be honest, if I really wanted to, maybe if I wanted to get a little bit more mass up to low Earth orbit, I could even do eight. It probably does have enough space space around this absolutely mahoosive 8 meter diameter tank in order to carry 8 of those things. Yes, 8 meters is the diameter I've gone for here, not quite the 10 meters that is the Saturn V, but I feel because this is basically one humongous long cylindrical tube of Hydrolox, we don't need to go for that extra 10 meter in diameter. And to be honest, making a large diameter is going to make this thing a lot more bloody expensive. Every slight increase in diameter that you do is gonna make tooling that much more painful. So I feel like eight meters for about 100 tons to low Earth orbit is going to do me fine now. I probably will have to do some more designs later on down the series in order to say lift 200 tons. I know N9 is probably going to be using Sea Dragon for those kind of insanely heavy lift launch vehicles. And Beardy has his glorious Mountain Dew aka Pentaborane. We're gonna have to think of something different. Maybe we'll make the Ariane XX and that will have, say, 20 Volcane engines on the first stage, just to be completely silly, just to make my PC die. It'll crash, it'll crumble to its knees, it will scream out in pain and then give out a puff of magic heat. 
and, and just be done with this world. I hope Mewtwo... <laughs> Am I going to get demonetized for saying stuff like that? I don't know. I don't really care too much about the monetization of my channel anymore. You may have noticed I don't upload all that frequently these days. Yeah, that's just live full-time job, which I thoroughly enjoy. But it just means I have very little free time to actually make any of these videos. If I'm not making one of these videos, it's, it's either just, you know, relaxing from work, playing a game for myself which is something I've actually started doing recently for the first time in many years. I always used to sit down and play a game and think I really should be recording this for YouTube but I've kind of gotten away from that ethos now and it's more like yeah I can sit and enjoy a game again which is nice but if I'm not doing that I'm also learning from my job. I'm learning new things. I've been working on React projects, I've been working on Unity projects, even though that isn't necessarily work related, but you know, it is software development and it is kind of honing my skills and it is also teaching me a little bit of C Sharp, which is something that I don't really know, although Unity C Sharp I feel is a little bit different from normal C Sharp. Anyway, <laughs> that, but, but basically that's why I'm not releasing as many videos at the moment. But I do plan on trying to get these For All Kerbal Kind videos out as and when they're needed. This is going to be the first one hopefully I'll have another one coming out next month and that's going to be more of a traditional episode rather than just this build and me talking about what's going on with my life at the moment but anyway it appears due to my foolishness and the fact that I'm not watching this video whilst I record the voiceover due to the fact that I have lost my headphones and I can't have the video playing with sound on means that unfortunately I kind of skipped over the vast majority of the structure of the build we are currently actually working on the detailing the greebling or all of that stuff to make it look nice and fancy. But basically, as mentioned, yeah, it has five Volcanes on its first stage. It has six P241 solid rocket boosters, which are going to help those five Volcanes get off the pad. And then it also has an upper stage, which is going to consist of 14, I believe, or it might be 12, I really should go back and check. You can go back and check if you want. I am recording this voiceover at four in the morning. I'm not going to go back and check. But yes, it's either 12 or 14 HM7Bs, which is going to power the upper stage. I could probably get away with just using Volcanes for this. However, that might push the thrust to weight ratio once that core stage has kind of, you know, finished burning to unbearable levels and we don't want to be putting our Kerbals through unbearable g-forces because that would make them feel very unwell, they'd be very poorly and I think HR would come and complain to me about putting our Kerbals through some rigorous procedures and space flights that realistically they don't need to be doing if I design the craft a little bit better. Yeah, so that upper stage will help with that and it will also help me squeeze out as much Delta V out of this craft as I possibly can. And obviously squeezing Delta V out of a craft is the name of the game. We want to make sure our vehicles are well, mostly as efficient as possible. Obviously I could make this even more efficient by not doing all of this detailing now, some of which I'm actually going to go back on right now. So I didn't like that layout of different companies on the side of the rocket. It is something that you do see in generic rockets. However, what I mentioned at the beginning of this video is that I took some inspiration from the Ariane 6 rocket for this build. And the Ariane 6 that I even showed at the beginning of this video, you can see a list of the flags or kind of images of the flags of the different countries that make up the European Space Agency in the shape of a 6 on the side of the rocket. So of course, this being the Ariane X, I have decided to do a X on the side using the same thing. We have a European Union flag in the middle surrounded by all of the different countries that are making up Europe and the ESA at the moment. Now I did actually have to spend a little bit of time researching which countries would be in Europe in this time period because obviously the USSR still owns a lot of Eastern Europe so I couldn't be plopping on USSR states like Lithuania, Latvia, the Baltics on there, that would be pretty bad and wouldn't really be time specific. But I think I've done a bit of a better job than I did the last time I plastered flags all over a rocket, which I think is actually the Ariane 5. And I have rebuilt that and I've actually taken parts from the Ariane 5 and I'm using it on this rocket. I'm taking the boosters, which also do have the right flags because these are new boosters that I've made, and also the fuel lines, the, the big 
fuel things that run down the side because I didn't really want to waste loads of time building those again. I have three perfectly good ones from my Ariane 5 build, which we haven't yet seen in this series, but it will be coming soon. It will probably be coming before the Ariane X because, you know, it's the next iteration of Ariane that I will be flying. It makes more sense to fly that before I fly the big one. But yeah, I didn't really want to be making those tiny little bits of Greeble all over again when I already have them and I can just grab them from a craft I've already done and just whack them on here. Another bonus of reusing these is that when I go to tool them on the Ariane 5, they will already be tooled on here. But as I previously mentioned, these parts are so incredibly small that the tooling cost really isn't going to be massive. So that kind of benefit is really negligible. It, it doesn't, it's not going to be a huge thing at all but it is a nice little bonus that we do get to reuse some of our tooling because of course reusing tooling is the name of the game when it comes to being super efficient in realism overhaul something that clearly this rocket isn't going to be due to all of the extra detail that i have added on oh well <laughs> Anyway, we are nearing enough the end of the build now. We've pretty much got everything in place, and this is the part where I really wish that we still had Editor Extensions Redux on this install. It is a mod, it's kind of like I want to think of as a client-side mod almost, in that I can go and grab that for myself if I really wanted to, if it does make building things for myself easier. However, it did break things in the game before, like not, not break things for Beardy and N9, but when you were building something in the vehicle assembly building, if you were using editor extensions redux and you left the VAB, then the whole game just decided to die. You had to reload it. Nothing went wrong. Nothing was corrupted, but it was just a long time to get back into the game to finish building something that you really wanted to have finished 10 minutes ago. And that's probably something most of you who are still watching this video 12 minutes in are thinking, but we have finally finished the build. The build is done and look at it, the Ariane X in all its glory at Karoo launch site. Now, there are a few extra bits that I do need in order to really complete this vehicle. One of them being adding a modular launch pad because those tiny little launch clamps unfortunately don't really cut the mustard. They look a little bit rubbish compared to everything else that I fly, but I tend to find those are a little bit finicky. <laughs> In all honesty, I just didn't have the time. But anyway, before we finish this video, I am going to show that it does actually fly. We'll get a few beauty shots of the big beastly Ariane X taking off from Karoo Launch Site or Karoo Launch Center, Karoo Space Center, KSC, you may and just, yeah, it's, it flies, it works. And I did test it all the way through to completion. It can get 100 tons up to low Earth orbit. You can get 100 tons up to low Earth orbit with fuel remaining, which means that there is a good chance that we probably can take more than 100 tons, especially if I do upgrade the core stage with an extra two P241 boosters as well. That is definitely a configuration that I will look into doing. We might even be able to get up to about 120 tons to low Earth orbit, so the equivalent of a Saturn V, which means that this vehicle is pretty darn good and definitely will be capable of sending my Kerbals over to the moon to perform a lunar landing and return, hopefully within the next three years, because I have picked up that contract and I'm fairly sure I need to complete it within three years, so I really have set the time for myself here, and if I don't do it, then I lose a lot of money and I do not think I will ever be able to financially recover. One thing that crosses my mind now that we've got a bit of a better view of the upper stage with all of those engines, but I still can't see how many of there are because of Real Plume basically hiding all of the engines in the back, but that's what I want to talk about, Real Plume. So for the Vulcane and for the P241s, I do not have Real Plume config for it. Well, no, I have real plume configs. I don't have waterfall configs. So it looks a little bit rubbish at the moment and I have never made waterfall configs. I don't know how to do it. So that is something that I'm probably going to have to go away and investigate or maybe really kindly ask Beardy if he'll tell me his knowledge because I have watched him make his own waterfall configs before but I've honestly got no idea what I'm going into with doing that but it would be nice to have those solids and the, the Hydrolox Vulcane engines on the first stage actually have proper real pl uh, why do I keep getting that mixed up R waterfall configs 
so that it looks even more beautiful than it already does. <laughs>